and we have a lot of rain coming up this week and we have a lot of tomatoes that are ripe and ready to pick and if we don't harvest them they're going to split and crack because of all the rain we have had a lot of rain recently we had hurricane barrel which was a tropical storm for us that came through and we got four inches from it i think that was last week and this week we already got an inch of rain and all next week they're saying that we're gonna get rain so we're gonna try and get all of this stuff harvested while we're over here though i noticed there is a new plant that i planted this year this is called a moonflower i seen that it is just about to open up but it is this really cool vine it's up to here right now taller than me and that is these are these seeds i got at the dollar tree so i think i paid like a quarter <laughs> so i am really excited and you can see i've got more plants coming down here too and we also have our malabar spinach here all down here and just keeps spreading but i think we're gonna go over here to our big tomatoes and harvest those i had already started and we're like we probably should film this so we're gonna come over here and i have finally figured out i went back to my plan of where i wrote everything down whenever i did all of this it was like a crazy planting weekend and i like totally redid what i was gonna do in this garden bed here so i can fit more plants in so i now know what is here so i thought this was the black creme tomatoes but this is actually a better boy that is uh like a standard variety this is what like my family grew and stuff they would always buy the plants so i've got those two here and they have really really big tomatoes on them and they are doing really good i've got a few ripe down here in the bowl here these two are the better boy and this one came off of this plant down here so i've got two rutgers and then the other one came off of these two that are called the bonnie's best i have two there that are that i think one of them ended up dying but that's what we have there i know i've got some more on the other side we'll come down here these are triple crop and i have wanted to grow these for years but they are not doing good they're a really cool potato leaf variety and i had seen people grow them and they were like as big as my hand and uh they were not they're not doing so great for me and they're having a lot of issues with blight and after that we have the chef's choice orange some of these like one of these this one right here i grew from seed and then the other one i got from the store but it looks to be doing really really good so we have got a whole handful can you see look at this <laughs> these probably could stay a few more days but i'm having issues with birds getting to them too let's see what do you think with these down here should i think those are still kind of yellow what do you think go ahead all right we'll have to get in here <laughs> we'll have to step in here to get them they're pretty big so we'll go ahead and pick these because i think we do have like a full week where they're saying we're gonna get rain but all of these are chef's choice orange and years ago was it last year or a few years ago i can't remember i grew uh this plant from seed and it was my best producing plant this thing was loaded with tomatoes and it's kind of doing the same thing now but i actually think i had more last year and then here we have a black creme tomato these are so good they taste even better than the cherokee purples they are so pretty too so we a whole bunch of them under there is too. there that are ready oh my goodness i didn't even see that well i think they might have done gone bad i have had issues with critters too getting in here and eating them yep i think they're all bad there okay well we'll have to go get our basket too but uh let's see and these down here are jubilees this is an heirloom variety of an orange tomato and these have really really good flavor too they're usually a little bit bigger than this for some reason this plant isn't super big and as you can tell it's struggling it's getting blight too but we'll go ahead and pick all of this i'm gonna have to go get my basket and i'm probably gonna need several baskets because our roma tomatoes like our paste tomatoes are getting super big so i'm gonna come around this way if you want to come to the front, I'll grab There's one right there, too. Oh, yeah. There's one on this side on the front, too, that I'll grab and get it, too. I hadn't got to it yet. So we'll come and see. There's this one. Oh, it just came right off. <laughs> but this one, this is the better boy. And look at this one. Like, this one, I don't think I should pick just yet. But look at that. Can you see on my hand how big it is? 
Like that is massive. That probably isn't my biggest tomato. I think my biggest tomato was, was it two pounds or just under two pounds? I think it to... was right around two pounds. Yeah, and it was a rainbow variety. That was the variety it was. I don't think there's any more in there. These have kind of fell down. I should take care of them better, but it has been a crazy year. Between the weather and everything going on, our garden really has done very good considering all the things. Rain is really hard on tomatoes, especially if they are ripe. So, let's get these in here. Let's see, I think that, oh yeah, there's more down here. <laughs> these things are so productive. I may have not have got a big enough basket here. I may have to get more. So we got all of that out of just this one bed. This is kind of my like big slicer tomato bed. That's kind of what I was trying to turn this into. I think this is four by 16. Yeah. And I don't even have anything on the back side either. I was, yeah. they're so big. I just kind of let them do their own thing. And I, I could plant more things there. I just don't. I, try, I find it's easier to harvest them if I don't. So now we're going to move on to these tomatoes. These are like the paste tomatoes that you want to um, make your sauces out of. Last year I really got into sauce making and I have really, really been enjoying that. So um, we're going to get some of these. I have several videos on our channel where I share how, um, how I make our sauces. I, use, I just use a blender and keep it super, super simple. And I even made some the other day. I decided at like 11 o'clock at night <laughs> to make some uh, sauce. And uh, I asked the editor, I said, uh, did you hear me with it? And they're like, yeah, I heard you scream. And I laughed because I didn't add the bottom of the blender on right. And I poured all the liquid all over me. <laughs> so that was really funny. I am very, very clumsy. If you will learn anything about me, <laughs> it's that. I am very, very clumsy. Look how good size these are though. This is the mm -hmm. Shelby variety. Oh, that one wasn't so good. But you can just cut these spots off here, but they work really good. Um, th like I said, this is the Shelby variety and I wasn't sure if I was gonna like this one. There's still more back there. My hands are just full. Um, I really, goodness. what is it? There's so many. I know. I didn't think I was gonna like this variety very much, but I think this might be my favorite one. Like I almost didn't buy these seeds and I got these seeds from Hoss Tolls. They are a really good company. They are my favorite place to get all of my pepper seeds. But look at this, like that was one plant I got all of, all of these like paste tomatoes off of. Well, some of them have a little bit of bug damage, but luckily these bigger ones, they don't. So go figure. <laughs> oh goodness. I see some bugs too, but that's okay. Oh, that smells good. I'm getting in the basil. That's really good to have to put in your sauce too, to put fresh, fresh basil in it. That is really, really good. Now, I think this is the last of the Shelby variety. So we'll have that here. And then this, uh, this variety did not do very good. It was a really wet spring for us, which is really unusual. A bunch of them back up in is there? there? Oh my goodness, I didn't see that. Well, thank you. I'm so glad you've seen that. Well, let's look at that. That's kind of cool. They're a little bit, these ones are longer and the tachis are a little fatter. So that's kind of neat. But these plants really struggled this spring with the wet spring that we had. And I thought I was gonna like this variety the best, but I am not so sure. I think, I think so far I like the Shelby. I like to grow different varieties and try different things. And I've still got another variety down here so these ones are a little bit smaller <laughs> our basket is almost overflowing okay so i think let's see yeah this is the last of the tachi i think i had like five tachi plants there's also weeds in here i have not been able to tend to my garden like i would like to but that's just life sometimes and i am super super thankful that we put down this ground cover that has felt like a lifesaver <laughs> It has been so nice, but we are almost done with that. Let's see. Uh, okay, and down here. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I know. I'm gonna get an arm workout now. Down here, I have the Amish paste. Now, starting off this spring, I thought these were gonna do amazing, and I was super, super happy with them. But they have got blight, as you can tell. 
really, really bad and they're really starting to uh, go downhill quickly. So um, I don't know that I'll grow the Amish paste again. I'll probably grow it again just to give it another try. I had grown it one time a long time ago and I had a lot of issues with blossom end rot. But I think, I don't know, I'm on the fence, but I probably won't like make this a main staple crop. Let's show um, the difference. Let's get one of these. I think this was Shelby variety and then the Amish paste. So you can see the difference. There is a big difference. Plus we had a ton more. So there's all of that. Let's see, I wanna come show our okra real fast. I might should have got the snip. I do have it in no. my pocket. <laughs> okay, let's go find them. I didn't think about that. I should have had you grab them. Do you know where we left them? I don't know. Okay. You were supposed to grab them. Oh, that might be an issue. <laughs> well, we're going on a hunt for something we didn't even bring. <laughs> I was supposed to bring it. Okay, well, we'll just come look at the okra then, and then we'll come back. These ones haven't uh, started yet, although I think there might have been some flowers. Do you want to go around this way or the yeah, other way? Yeah, I'll thing? go this way. Okay. Oh my goodness, look, there's a pumpkin. Oh! Robert's been telling me every morning that there's so many pretty yellow flowers out here and you ought to turn around and show how big the pumpkin plants are getting. This is the pumpkin patch. This used to be the potato patch. Yeah, and, and now it's the pumpkin patch. And it is doing so good. You can see all the flowers, that, like they're they everywhere. Really That's awesome. Last year we had one of these plants and we got like an uh, ounce or two shy of 30 pounds of pumpkins. Oh, here's one with the baby. Is it? Right oh, yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Teeny tiny one. That is awesome. Can you see it? <laughs> sorry, I couldn't tell. That's so cute. That is very neat. But yeah, these pumpkins, we, th we thought it was a futile experiment, but. Yeah, there's more here too. They're uh, starting. You can see the little baby. Yep. Yeah. It's a teeny tiny baby. They're doing incredible. We're going to be uh, in trouble with pumpkins. We're going to have to find somebody to give pumpkins to, I guess. I don't know. Do you think I should pick this one? I'm just looking here. That one's kind of changing. Go ahead. These are the, what was it? It's Shelby variety. You can see how many more are on this back side, too, of those tomatoes. Let's see. So this one, I'm trying to remember. I did a two different varieties of okra. I think one of them was called like a high producer or something like that from Baker Creek and I want to say that was it. And this one I think is the Star of David. Now these ones, I usually grow the burgundy okra and this I think is about the size you're supposed to get. That's like way too big. I totally missed my opportunity with it. And they were blooming so pretty yesterday. They had the prettiest like hibiscus type flowers. But I don't see them. There's a smaller one here, so that'd be a good one to pick if I can. I would have brought my snips. But I'll go back and I wanted to, to say something else. So I usually grow the burgundy variety, and it is a lot smaller. Like it's probably this thick. If you can see, can you see through the leaves? Okay. It's usually this thick, and this one is like really fat and wide. So um, I'm not sure if I'm going to like that because what I usually do with my okra is do like a refrigerator pickle with them and that's going to be really hard to get out of the container. <laughs> I didn't think about that whenever I planted them. So I'm not sure if I'm going to like that. I'm going to make some refrigerator pickles and see, but I'm kind of wondering if that was a bad decision. <laughs> I'm definitely going to have to be really careful about what, what uh, jars I use whenever I uh, pickle those. Okay, so we've got several of those. Also, the leaves on these are so much bigger than our burgundy okra. They are crazy, crazy big comparatively. I, I do like that an awful lot. Okay, so in we go. I'll let you go first. So you ain't got to fight the weeds. Actually, they aren't weeds. These are perennial sunflowers. <laughs> Believe it or not, they're just, they're, so here's one. They're just almost done. But it's a perennial sunflower called a Maximilian sunflower. They are really cool. Okay. Well, which one? Where do you think we should go now? <laughs> I guess we'll cut for a second and go get our snips, and then we'll come back. Okay. <laughs> All right. I just went and got the snips, and I walked by, and do you remember this moonflower that I just touched? <laughs> It is already open. I'm like sitting here thinking like, what kind of powers do I hold? <laughs> I 
I cannot believe that, that it opened up in that short amount of time when we harvested two garden beds. That is insane. I cannot believe that. Okay, so I have the snips, and I guess we'll go ahead and go get the uh, okra here. One of them is probably going to be way too big, but at least I can experiment with the jar, and we'll see which one works good for that. So let's see. I think they were here. Yeah, can you see? We'll get this big, big one. This is probably way too big. I probably can't use that one, but we'll get that one. Do you see any other ones? I guess there's this one, that one, and I think that one probably still needs a day, literally a day. I probably better not give it any longer. <laughs> It'll be too much. Okay, so we'll just add that to the top there in this crazy big basket. Now I guess we'll go to the cherry tomatoes. Yeah. I hope I brought enough of baskets. <laughs> Why don't you pan over and show how many tomatoes there are? Like, especially up here, there are so many. I do not know if I'm going to have enough of baskets. And they go all the way down. Is it okay if I go ahead and get these down here? Yeah, you go right ahead. <laughs> I'm going to be here a while. <laughs> There's so many. These are what? What were these called? The sweetheart Those ones. Are sweetheart cherry. They're from yeah. Baker Street. I think everybody really likes those a lot. Yeah. And you can see just all the blooms on them. Still, there's just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of blooms. And you can see how many they're putting on too. Yeah. They are a really good producer. Yeah, and they have really, really good flavor. They taste like your classic, um, classic heirloom tomato. And they have like kind of, to me, like the perfect amount of acidity. And they are just super, super good. This variety here is called Reason Traub. It's got a little pointy tip to it. It's pretty good too. Let's see. I'm trying to get some of these down here. They're there's so many of them and they're hiding <laughs> and some of them have cracks so we'll have to go through there but I'm just trying to pick semi quickly because <laughs> there is a lot a lot to pick I mean even if they're cracked you can still use them as long as they haven't started to like mold or anything like that you can still use them if yeah. they're cracked I don't know if I should I think these are probably ready they're starting to crack too this plant isn't looking so hot I'm not sure exactly which variety this one was Oh, there's more down here. Oh, that one's really, really cracked. We're not getting those. Those have molded, so we won't get those. So have those. <laughs> you can tell these ones that are in the, the potato vines, I did not see. So that's why they are like that. And it smells so good. I've got basil over here. It smells amazing. I can't smell the basil over the tomato. <laughs> Let's see. I guess we'll pick some of these. Should I pick these or give those a day? I'd pick them. Okay. And oh, they're starting to crack too. But we, I see a lot of sauce in my future. <laughs> I was busy making that the other day and it was so good. Oh, I forgot how good fresh pasta sauce is. It's amazing. Look at more. So more down in here. Well, some of them were moldy, so I just left them. Oh, you found some. Those are a new variety we got at the uh, farm store. They're a jelly bean variety. I don't know if you can see there. That's what these are. Yeah, even those. That's called jelly bean. They're okay. I don't know if I'd get them again, but that was a new to us variety this year. And my go-to is sun gold. This is it. It's like one of these really tall ones. It is my favorite. I love it so much. It doesn't have quite as much acidity as normal tomatoes and it is highly highly productive as you can see these right here are sun gold i think this is two plants that are this productive they are a super producer almost <laughs> they do amazing we had so many last year we were giving them away and by the walmart sack yes that was before i learned how to make sauce and then i learned how to make sauce and i couldn't couldn't have enough almost <laughs> We really love it. I guess that was two years ago we yeah. were giving them away by the Walmart sack. I know. The years get by by you and you don't realize how fast they're going. It's like, how is it already almost August? It doesn't make sense. It is crazy. Well, I just dropped all of them. They're kind of difficult. You should be better about 
tying them up and stuff, but life has been crazy and I'm just doing the best that I can. And even if you kind of just let them go and do their own thing, as you can tell, they still do just fine and are productive. I've had years where I am not doing very good with weeding. This was before we got our weed fabric. And even though there were tons and tons of weeds, our tomatoes and peppers and stuff still produced so good. So even if you have an imperfect garden, they still produce. We had one year where we had some volunteers that came up around on the back side of the house. Where we had had chickens. Where we had chickens before. And uh, we just let them grow. And by the end of the year, they started late because it stays shady back there for for quite a while because the way the house sits and they kind of got started late but at the end of the year we picked what was it like 60 or 40 it was several five gallon buckets yeah like i, I, I want to say like 60 or 70 pounds yeah. of green tomatoes yeah and now we lost about half of them because half of them rotted before they turned red but we still got a bunch of them that ripened on the counter and I made all kinds of salsa verde with it. It was really good. Like it was insane. And it was really cool too, cause we didn't like uh, stake the plant up or anything. It just started vining on its own. And if y'all know anything about tomatoes, if this part of the tomato touches the ground, like any part of the stalk, it'll just start to root. And that's what it did. And it had these massive roots. We didn't water this thing and we had a drought. All of our other tomatoes were, <laughs> were going and causing us issues but they did great we got a motorcycle gang of four-wheelers coming through <laughs> i don't know if y'all know it or not but in arkansas it's not against the law to drive your four-wheeler on the road come through in big packs like this going down to the river with some of these people y'all I'm not even playing they've got side-by-sides that I guarantee you cost fifty sixty thousand dollars that they're, they're driving around through here yeah. with sound systems in them that probably cost ten thousand dollars Okay, I think we're gonna go to the other side. Look at that, I filled this basket up. <laughs> I still gotta go to the other side. Let's see, I think I'll just set this one here and we'll go get more. I just still cannot believe this no flower. <laughs> that just kills me, I can't believe it. And it only blooms at night, right? Yeah, I think I just so. just fell down, I'm sorry oh. about that, guys. <laughs> you okay? I guess um. I'll start on this side too. Are you okay? Yeah. Okay. These are uh, Sun Sugar tomatoes. These are my kids' favorite. They're a little bit sweeter than the Sun Gold, and to me, they're not quite as productive, but they're still very, very good. So we'll go ahead and get these. I have to remind me to turn around and get the other ones. I'm bonking my head on things. And more All right, guys, we're through. gonna pause. Somebody's playing loud music. All right, y'all, we'll, we're back. Sorry, just didn't want to get in trouble. People coming through with their side-by-sides and four-wheelers playing loud music. There still might be a few more coming through. I hear some loud vehicles. Yeah. They usually, sometimes they'll come through, there'll be 50 or 60 of them, it seems yeah. like. But in Arkansas, it's not illegal to drive your side-by-side -side or your four-wheeler on the road. Where I'm from, in Missouri, it wasn't. If you got caught driving your four-wheeler on the road, uh, police would uh, happily take your four-wheeler from you. Here comes more. Keep coming. This variety 
Alrighty, here is a Snow White. This is a white cherry tomato that is really, really good. This one I grew from seed from a plant that we had got at the farm store last year. And so it's like a hybrid and it has done just fine. Like it's producing really, really good. One down there too. You can see this is the store variety. It was kind of so small that I wasn't able to stake it up earlier. And it's, you can tell how much better the one that we grew um, just from that same seed, even though it was a hybrid, it's done really, really good. But these have a really good flavor. Some, several family members, this is their absolute favorite tomato as far as the cherry tomatoes go. You can see too what the hurricane and everything did to our flower garden. It just blowed everything over. Even all the stuff we had around back, it did that too. Yeah. They it was so sad. They went one way with the tropical storm, and then we had another storm the other day, and it pushed them the other way. <laughs> so the poor things have taken a beating. And this tomato, I've look, finally looked back at my plans too. This one is a sweetie, and look at how tall this one is. This is like our tallest cherry tomato we have, and it is doing really, really good. I can't believe how tall it is. Um, let's see. We're almost done. They aren't super big. I think I've grown them before and they were a lot bigger. So I don't know. No, that's kind of weird. They came, it's not like save seed that I used or anything. So I'm not really sure. And this one is a Brad's Atomic Grape. Um, some family members like this quite a lot. This was a new one this year and they said that it kind of sort of tasted like the black creme. You want it to kind of be like a purpley color. So it's probably a little too early to pick it. But I got those seeds at the Dollar General. So I think that's good. I don't know all the, the my tigerella, it looks like my tigerella plant died. I was so excited about this plant. I grew it a few years ago and it was like one of my best producers, but it did not do good this year. Oh, I think these are ready too. I didn't even see those down there. <laughs> got a whole handful here. Um, let's see. I think that's pretty good. What do you think? Do you see I any other? So. Okay, so now we'll go down to the in-ground garden. <laughs> There's more tomatoes yet to pick. <laughs> We have so many. That's the negative to cherry tomatoes is they take a really, really long time to pick. I think I'm actually faster if I go this way. So I'm gonna go this way. I have, and just for comparison, these are sun gold tomatoes in ground. And if y'all remember when we were over here at the arbor, those were a lot bigger. Yeah, so, they're like three feet taller over there yes. in the, in the raised bed garden yes we really really like the raised bed a whole lot better than the in-ground garden but we grew way too many plants and i was just trying to not have to give them away or compost them or whatever so i just put them in here and i guess it wasn't the worst thing i have had to water these so so much more than the others but i think it's okay i mean we're still getting something from it so should I take them over and show them uh, sure. alfalfa? Sure. Go right ahead. If y'all were on the live stream the other day, I showed y'all that I throwed some alfalfa out here in a spot where we had an old car that we had hauled off. And it's doing really good. It's actually starting to bush out. We've watered it a couple of times. You can see it got a little splotchy here and there, but it's starting to fill in. And then over here, it looks really nice and lush. It almost looks like clover, but this is uh, alfalfa. I'm kind of excited to see how tall it actually gets. And then over here, Carrie wanted me to show you this thing. I forget what you, what do you call this thing over here? Anyways, she, she had a coleus, that's what it's called. But it's got uh, these pretty purple flowers all over it. This thing is thirsty. Almost every day it requires a gallon of water. When I come out here to feed the birds, almost every day I have to give it a gallon of water or it is all droopy and saggy. It's even a little saggy now. But with all the rain we got coming, I think it'll be okay. About got them all yet? Yeah, I got them all. 
I was going to show the difference. This is the Brad's Atomic Grape. This was in the raised bed, and this was in the in-ground garden. So oh, yet wow. another example of how much better the plants yeah. do in the raised bed. So much bigger. Okay, well, are you ready for your turn? <laughs> I guess so. Okay. All right, we're going to cut for a second, and then I guess I'm going to go harvest peppers. We'll be right back. All right, here we go. We're going to pick these peppers out of this in-ground garden bed. They're pretty spindly and sad, but... They're producing nonetheless. Yeah, they're still making it. Some of these are getting a little bit of blossom end rot. And I have the same varieties planted here as I do in the raised bed too. Yeah, and you'll see the difference in size. It is, it is no comparison. Yeah, they are so much better in the raised bed. And you don't have to water them as much. We started a... Lisa peppers oh, when yeah. they're fully ripe. They're so pretty. And that's the time to say seed when they're fully ripe like that and red. Don't save them from the green ones. I made that mistake. Here's also one that you don't want to save seed from one like this. Yeah, you that's wanna, small. You want to save them from your best example. Yeah. But we, uh, whenever we first started, we grew them in... Uh, buckets. This and one grew inverted. Whoa, is that a Lisa too? Yeah, it grew Whoa. inverted. Hang on, it's not wanting to focus. There it goes. Whoa, that is wild. How about that? You get peppers to do weird things. And you may not want to pick those. What those are, are the hot ones. Oh, okay. <laughs> Look yeah, at this. These are the heatless habaneros. And this isn't, remind you, this isn't even in the raised bed where they're producing so much. And look how productive these plants are. In our last video we did, where we showed what we did <laughs> to replace them, because Robert is not the biggest fan of hot peppers. So, uh, if y'all want to check out that video, you can. I used to love hot peppers, and then one year we grew uh, a Hungarian wax pepper and a banana pepper. And the Hungarian wax pepper was supposed to be a hot pepper, and the banana pepper was not supposed to be. And for some strange reason, even though they're not supposed to, they cross. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. The joys of living in a neighborhood. <laughs> that, one, that one doesn't sound very good. I don't think it's long for this world. <laughs> but anyways, they crossed. And it kind of ruined me on hot peppers. Yeah. Because they were both Hungarian waxes. One oh, was okay. hot and one was not. And they were right next to each other. And, and they crossed. And it just... All of our pepper mixes had hot peppers in them. Yeah. And it it kind of just ruined me on... And that was really bad, too, because peppers are one of the crops that we grow enough of for our family for the year. So we were really struggling that year because we didn't want the hot peppers. And they're doing a lot better. We were having a little bit of an issue with blossom end rot. And some of these ones that we left that were still pretty big, they were, I don't know, probably uh, that size or so that we still left on it whenever we treated them. They're still having a little bit of issue, but all these other ones... They are doing really good and yeah, seem to find them in here amongst them. <laughs> stuff. Yeah, the sweet potato vines, I have found that those are a great companion for peppers. And we did an experiment this year where we grew uh, sweet potatoes different ways. Some of them slip, some of them other ways. And I don't know if you can tell, but the ones down there are the way that we normally grow it. And these, this is the new way that we tried this year. And they are so, so much bigger. This plant here is uh, about dead. Uh-oh. Which one is it? Is it a gypsy? gypsy oh, no. That's, happened to us. that's one of our favorite varieties. Probably if we could grow only one variety, we would grow the gypsy gypsy pepper if I can talk that is these up here these main ones up here though so they are super super productive and they have such good flavor they're a nice thick walled sweet pepper did you cut yourself I just dang near tried to cut my finger oh off. goodness are you okay I don't think I got through oh, just, just pinched yourself just oh barely. goodness I'm so sorry well be try and be careful I didn't <laughs> don't worry about getting them if you're gonna cut yourself I'm so sorry. Sometimes you reach in there and you can't see. Look at 
that the pumpkin is all the way over to here. We uh, know, probably need to redirect to, that, or else it's going to be in the pepper. it and get around it all, but it's <laughs> everywhere. I'm always stepping on it, like right next to my foot. I here. see. Baby oh gosh. And I'm trying to. The negative of <laughs> our kind of spur of the moment planting pumpkin idea. <laughs> These purple ones are looking great now. Though. That's awesome. I gotta try and get over. Oh wow, that is good. There's a baby one right here. I see. I'm gonna try and not step on it here. I'm gonna try and go over it. Okay, I think I made it. We can step on the sweet potato vines. It's fine. It doesn't hurt them, but uh, yeah, they don't care. Yeah. Stump all over. I've I've literally mowed them down. <laughs> And three days later, they're right back just as many as there was before. And they're so pretty. They flower, too. It's the end of the day, so they're not really flowering now. But they are super, super pretty. Be another careful. one that grew inverted. What? That is so wild. My goodness. Another thing you can do, too, if you're have, having issues with blossom end rot, is pick your peppers before they get, like, super big. I kind of almost wonder if we should do that or not, but I think we're going to give it a try and make sure our treatment worked. But, yeah, that's another thing you can do if you're having issues with blossom end rot. Any of your nightshade plants are really susceptible to that, at least any of the gardens that I've had. And usually I don't have an issue with it if I um, treat it like whenever I plant it and put all the amendments in. But this year I didn't have what I thought I had. <laughs> so that was an issue. Yeah, and a lot of people say like, you know, grind up multivitamins and put them in there. Or, or put tums in there. Or, or eggshells. Like We've never had luck with any of that. Stuff. Yeah. Oh, That's more of them hot peppers. There. Yeah, there's still some of those left in here. That's a stuffer right there. That's a King Arthur uh, bell pepper, and they are super, super good, super prolific, and super sweet. Watch the baby pumpkin. Oh, yes, they're so cute. We really need to come and redirect these. Oh, here's the flowers. So they're already closed up for the night, but they are a beautiful purple flower with the sweet potatoes. Oh, are you okay? Yeah, I was trying to throw that. <laughs> but there. There's another big one back there. Don't know if I can see it. There's so many leaves and these peppers are super, super big. Like these are tomato cages and they are that big. So you've got another pretty one. Awesome. Look at how pretty the basket is. So beautiful. All the colors. <laughs> You're seeing is that I don't see. Yeah, I just don't know what size you want to pick them at. If uh, you want to pick them early or not, just especially since we have a week of rain, like if they're this one's starting to get a little bit of color on it. Yeah, it's got the sun on it. Careful for your fingers. Oh, here comes a whole bunch more. <laughs> more four wheelers, more side by side. You ought to see it during hunting season. It gets plump stupid. <laughs> That's all in yeah, we're just gonna leave those. There's some more purple ones. These, I don't know what happened. We have one plant of these purple ones that grow like a bell shape. We have another of these, and they, they're the same plant. They come from the same seed. Yeah, they were the Zulu peppers from Baker Creek. And one of them grows long like this, and one of them grows short like this. It's almost like an Italian pepper and then like a bell pepper. I don't know That's what. That's weird. It, I don't know if it's something to do with the hybridization of it or. Well, they're supposed to be heirloom varieties. Oh, well. But I guess that's the thing with uh, heirlooms is, you know, they can cross really easily. Well, maybe they I did. I think, maybe anyways. they cross with something else. So I we guess. Just didn't know it. It's just really strange because these plants on this side of the bed all grow in this long shape. <laughs> Whereas the plants on the other side of the bed all grow in that short, fat shape. That is really wild. Oh, we got some. Oh, that's the Corno de Toro one. Yeah. That's one we got from the store, and I don't know if you can tell, like, how, how much thinner the stalks are versus, like, the ones that we grew um, from seed here. 
oh, I can get it. There's so many leaves, but that's kind of the stock of ones that we grew versus the ones that we got at the store. And I usually like to do that like a side-by-side -side comparison so you can kind of see. Also, I think we have some store-bought varieties there too as well and it kind of dips down so they're not quite as big. And now he's getting another variety that I really like. This is, uh, is it tricked you or fooled you? Tricked you, fooled you, not a pino. Yeah. <laughs> I've heard all of them. Yeah, I can't remember exactly which one this one's called, but they are a really good uh, jalapeno that, did you get yourself again? No. Oh, okay, <laughs> you got yourself again. Um, that doesn't have the heat. They are super good. They have that nice jalapeno flavor, but they don't have the heat. We really love peppers, as you can tell. <laughs> we are able to grow enough uh, peppers for our family in this four foot by 16 foot bed, and we've been able to do that for several years now. Growing specific varieties, especially ones that are high producers, is the key to being able to do that. Yeah, we've still got peppers in the freezer from 2022 that yeah. we're still working I think through. we actually did get through those. Oh, well, <laughs> Just the other day, but good. not too long ago. When we were cleaning out the freezer, Robert was trying to talk me into <laughs> tossing them, but I, I protested and we decided to keep them. <laughs> we almost need a whole freezer dedicated to just peppers. Yeah. But we use peppers in just about everything. Yeah, else. we use them like most people use onions. Look at these sweet potato vines. They come all the way through the peppers there. Know, they are it's massive. It's hard for me to even see <laughs> where the peppers are because of them. And I usually cut some of these gypsies, even though they're yellow, just to add some yellow color to the mixture. Yeah. Sorry about the noise. Picked a heck of a time to do this. Yeah, it was, it was, party time was closing down. <laughs> everybody was coming back home. <laughs> you think we lived in the busiest place ever? <laughs> yeah. Literally, we live in a town of less than a hundred people, but they come from all around and they come through this way. <laughs> So, yeah, we're the cutoff road, even yeah. for like semi trucks and stuff too. Yeah, they built family dollars and dollar generals everywhere. So now they use what used to be our nice, quiet little road as a cutoff road to get from one town to another. I think that's pretty good. Okay. I don't see much else. Do All you? right, I don't think so. I think you pretty well got them. You could get some of these smaller ones, but I think we'll just try it and see if. They're good enough with our treatment. I think they'll be fine. They look good to me. They okay. look a heck of a lot better than what they do. They sure do. They're doing really good. All right, y'all, can y'all believe that <laughs> this moonflower has opened up even more? That is so crazy. But it is already starting to get dark. The mosquitoes are eating us alive. <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and get all of this weighed. We'll put the totals at the end. Thank y'all so much for joining us. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Y'all take care, and we'll see you next time. Bye!